as a regular like monanchi how do i become active in helping deal with the plastic problem you know yeah yeah uh, I, i think there are a couple of steps you could take uh, number one is educate yourself so that you understand the matter at hand what is climate change what is plastic pollution once you've done that now you could start creating awareness to your friends to your family and letting them know how we could actually now take charge of this you know menace that we have mm-hmm. um there's also participating in community activities there, there are a lot of clean up campaigns that happen you know um, going for town halls uh, i see some youth groups in Nairobi going for town halls to just talk to each other you know motivate each other because there's something called climate fatigue mm-hmm. where you feel like i'm doing so much and i'm not seeing the impact so there's also that and there's also engaging the government you know yeah um I'm, last year we had a youth uh, delegation which sat and said the ministry has to adopt a b c d and that has culminated in something called the climate change amendment bill mm-hmm. which they're discussing um it's now at public participation it's gonna go now to parliament and they can discuss at a whole so i feel like there those are some steps that you could take that would eventually maybe get you there yeah. yeah and make you feel like you know you're a little bit more part of the process part of the solution as well not yeah. just part of the problem mm-hmm. um we get rid of so much plastic uh, we use so much plastic yeah. but i th- you mentioned that the real uh change comes in stop preventing the creation of the plastic in the first yeah, place yeah. as opposed to trying to recycle it um but of course plastic is cheap right yeah. and i think that's a big challenge that um comes around when you're trying to you know reduce the amount of plastics that we use is that mm. they're cheap mm. uh are there ways in which you can encourage people to stop using plastics regardless of the cost or even a way that we can mitigate the cost so that um yeah plastic becomes the more expensive option Yeah I, I feel like the the most important discussion we can have is tax incentives for mm-hmm. sustainable alternatives to plastic yeah because mm-hmm. it see if when plastic plastic is ideally extremely cheap if you see at the plastic ban Uh, in 2017 yeah. could buy a plastic paper that has about 100 pieces for less than 50 bob yeah yeah and no that's one bag that's one yeah. bag that mm. has 100 pieces which are eventually going to go to ground mm-hmm. and when the ban was affected the brown bags which were much uh, costlier yeah, you know than, yeah. than the plastic so most people would end up <laughs> going back to the plastic you know people yeah. will to avoid paying like that 30 bob for one bag now people yeah. will carry all their groceries yeah, comicono, comicono, you know like a yeah. baby yeah. 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 hugging yeah. the vitungus <laughs> and taking them home you know yeah. <laughs> yeah and you you see we need to have a conversation about the incentives and tax rebates and we also need to have an extremely huge behavior change campaign because if you look at what happened during covid time yeah it was everywhere this is what you need to do to to protect yourself from covid wash yeah. your hands now everybody is speaking about that sanitizers are everywhere it's the same thing so i think it's a collective effort mm-hmm. yeah but the government has to be at the center of it because as we said there are so many youth groups there are so many environmental organizations extremely present and extremely funding initiatives but yeah. the government has to be at the core of it mm-hmm. yeah um i i i was thinking somewhere about the strategies involved in getting us to zero waste mm. and i was thinking some things we're talking about like um collection and cleanup and value recovery aspects of zero waste. Yeah. Um and there's a whole cycle involved to it, to it. Mm-hmm. Maybe you can tell us about that that cycle because for some people who are listening in right now they might hear these things and it might sound like jargon to them when they hear prevention, they mm-hmm. hear collection and cleanup and they hear value recovery aspects. Yeah. But how can we break it down to a way that anybody who's listening in right now for the first time about this story for the first time in their life can feel wait a minute i can be involved in any of those mm. uh, cyclical processes yeah you mentioned it because I, i agree environment is very technical yeah um <coughs> there are three steps you can look at this prevention there is collection and cleanup and there's value recovery mm. so prevention is basically you reducing completely your use of plastic or waste and now bringing on board other alternatives so this would be maybe having a reusable uh, water bottle as an example mm-hmm. yeah or a reusable shopping bag so you don't have to always buy a plastic water bottle you know you could just refill what you have so mm-hmm. that could be one and there's also repairing which is quite important instead of always throwing around things that are you know broken you could at least try fix them or try again reuse them for example um if you are drinking tonight you're drinking wine you know there are other ways that you could use to maybe cut the bottle in half and maybe the bottom part could be the glass the upper or part vase, could be your yeah. or a vase mm-hmm. yeah the, the upper part would be maybe a bulb holder so there's all of that there's also composting there's a lot of food that g- uh, gets thrown away but that could also be used as compost where we could have now organic manure instead of having to buy the chemical fertilizer which would now at least make sure what you're eating is healthy because mm-hmm. because yet again we don't know what goes into the fertilizers there's the collection and cleanup aspect of it so this is properly sorting of waste and and this is a very delicate conversation uh, allow me to mention something sure. there's something called the integrated solid waste management system 
So it's a whole system which introduces recycling, reducing until the end user. So you could have this is where now the color coded dustbins come in. Mm-hmm. So you could have one bin uh, graded into four. So there's plastic, glass, there's organic waste, and there's paper. Um, so it's important to sort out your waste like that. But what is more important is now sorting it out after someone has discarded their waste. So that goes into collection and cleanup. And this is where maybe the government could step in and maybe educate people, train them, or maybe allocate a bit of funding for them to be able to do all of this. Um, there's also engaging the community in education campaigns, you know, yeah, that also comes into collection and cleanup. And then there's also spreading awareness about the maintenance that we have. And then the last aspect would be value recovery. So this is now recycling and upcycling. Yeah. So for example, what I mean by upcycling is if you have a plastic water bottle which can be recycled entirely into another plastic water bottle, mm-hmm. it could be maybe cut into half or maybe made into a, a plastic paper bag or you know. So you just don't entirely or throw a it planter away. for your oh yeah. seeds or your your yeah. herbs in your garden, things like that. Yeah, yeah. So you don't entirely at least throw it away. You give it a bit more value. Okay. And then there's also another key aspect which I'm seeing some companies are doing. Uh, Sunlight, as an example, uh, launched one of their products in a fully recycled uh, bottle. So uh, even us as the general public could support these companies that are, you know, producing things into already recycled Mm -hmm. products. Yeah, so I think when you break it down that way, maybe s- people could be able to see this is why I fit in and yeah. this is what I can do. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Um, I think maybe as we wrap up, you could tell us how we can best celebrate and mark World Environment Day mm. and what this day means to the community in general, um, of course, and to the work that's being done in climate action in Kenya. Yeah, I feel for me, um, three things are extremely important. Number one is creating awareness, you know, yeah, so... If you're on social media and you see a post talking about, you know, World Environment Day, share it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Talk to friends, tell them, hey, we have an important day today. We're talking about plastics. This is how you can get involved. Uh, also educate yourself to you could be doing something that you is detrimental to the environment. But you know, the Bible says we my people perish because <laughs> of lack, lack of knowledge. Of knowledge yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's important to also educate yourself. And the l- final thing is to take an initiative to better the environment. So if you could plant a tree today, better. If you could be able to use a reusable water bottle, better. So I think those three things very important when as we mark World Environment. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you so much for informing us. Um, leaving us definitely better than when you came in earlier. Mm-hmm. And I hope that we have an amazing, amazing World Environment Day. And for you who's listening, of course, that you take what he said to heart and that we're better carers of our environment, especially when it comes to the issue of plastics. We'll get back into the mix now with DJ Jesh and then look at the news.